and speak about this mighty messenger of God, Jesus Christ. But for our purpose tonight, let us begin at the beginning, his birth. I open for you, which you can open at home in this book, chapter 3, verse 42. This is how it reads. وَإِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمُ So behold, the angel said, O Mary, إِنَّ اللَّهَ اسْتَفَاكِ وَتَحَّرَكِ وَاسْتَفَاكِ عَلَى نِسَاءِ الْعَالَمِينَ That God Almighty has chosen thee and purified thee, chosen thee above the women of all nations. Chosen Mary above the women of all nations. I say, such an honor is not to be found given to Mary, the mother of Jesus, even in the Christian Bible. It continues. Ya Maryam muknuti li rabbiki wasjudi warkai ma'arraqin. Say, O Mary, worship thy Lord devoutly. Prostrate thyself and bow down in prayer with those who bow down. Thalika min nambai laqaybi nuhihi ilayka. This is part of the tidings of the things unseen, which we reveal unto thee, O Apostle, by inspiration. وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِمْ إِذْ يُلْقُونَ أَقْلَامَهُمْ So thou wast not with them when they cast lots with arrows, as to which of them should be charged with the care of Mary. أَيُّهُمْ يَكْفُلُ مَرْيَمَا وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِمْ إِذْ يَخْتَصِمُونَ Nor was thou with them when they disputed the point. The story is that the mother of Mary, she was barren and she prayed to God for a child. Like Zechariah also in his old age, he prayed for a child and John the Baptist was born. This mother of Mary, she also prays for a child and in the mercy of God, she conceived and a child was born. And the child was Mary. She was yearning for a male child, a boy. But instead of a boy, a girl is born. And she had dedicated, she had vowed to dedicate this child for temple services. And the female is in no way like the male. She was disappointed. But what was she to do? She bided her time. When the child was big enough to be handed over to the temple, for looking after the temple, looking after the priest. She takes this little child, Mary, and there was a dispute in the temple. Everybody wanted this beautiful child to be a godfather to this little child. And there was a dispute. Everybody wants a child. So they started casting lots, like what we say, head or tail, like the tossing of the coin. And it came to the turn of Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, that he, it came to his turn, and there was a dispute among the people. They said, no, you are cheating. You know how we usually do when you lose. You say, you are cheating. There was a dispute. Now, God Almighty is reminding us through the lips of his holy prophet Muhammad that you were not there. Oh, Muhammad, you were not there when they cast lots with arrows, nor were you there when they disputed the point. Where did you get this information from? The answer is in the verse itself. These are part of the tidings of the things unseen, which we reveal unto thee, O Apostle, by inspiration. He is given by inspiration by God Almighty. But the controversialist, the propagandists, the opponents of Muhammad, the opponents of Islam, they say, no, Muhammad concocted this. He copied his book from the Jews and the Christians. He says, this is given to me by inspiration. They say, no, this is his own handiwork. For the sake of argument, tonight, I will agree with the enemies of Islam who say Muhammad wrote the book for the sake of argument, knowing full well that this is not his work. 
We are assured in the Holy Quran, Allah says, وَمَا يَنْتِكُ أَنِ الْحَوَىٰ That he does not speak from his own desire. إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْنُ يُوحَىٰ It is no less than inspiration sent down to him. أَلَّمَهُ شَدِيدُ الْقُوَىٰ He is taught by one mighty in power. Knowing full well that this is an inspiration revelation from God, for the sake of argument, we will agree with the enemy that Muhammad wrote the book. In return, I am only asking, Something very simple, very easy. I want you to agree with me, friend and foe alike, that Muhammad was an Arab. Any difficulty? The only thing I want you to agree with me is that Muhammad was an Arab. That he was not an Indian, he was not an African, he was not a Chinese, he was not an Eskimo. Am I asking too much? No. That Muhammad was an Arab. That's all. This Arab is telling other Arabs that a Jewess, the mother of Jesus, she was chosen above the women of all nations. Why would he want to go out of his way and provoke his own people? Why should he do that? When the Jews were looking down upon their Arab brethren for 3,000 years, they were insinuating that Father Abraham had two wives, Sarah and Hagar. And they are the children of Sarah through Isaac. And the Arabs are the children of Hagar through Ishmael. And as such, they are an inferior breed of people who the Arabs, but they are children of a bond woman, an African woman. You know, they have been racist from the beginning. The very same Jews, they murmured against Moses when he took that Ethiopian wife. It's in the Bible. And God struck Miriam with leprosy. And she was not healed until she repented because of her racism. The same attitude towards her Arab brethren. That these are the children of bond women. Looked down upon them for 3,000 years. And yet this Arab, Muhammad, May peace and blessings of God be upon him. He is saying that a Jewess, the mother of Jesus, she was chosen above the women of all nations. Not his own mother or his wife or his daughter Fatima, whom we Muslims believe will be the leader of the women of paradise. No. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was a woman chosen above the women of all nations. I say account for that. Account for it. Why should an Arab go out of his way and provoke his own people and honor this Jewess? As some would say, a woman from his opposition, a nation who opposes the Arabs. Why should he do that? Unless he was commanded to say so, to do so, which actually this is what he says. That this is given to me by inspiration. It is not what I want to say or what I feel like saying. This is given to me and I have no alternative but to give it to you as I receive it, the message. Verse 45. Chapter 3, verse 45. It continues. Is Excuse me, uh, lady, there will be time for questions. Let the speaker carry on. At the end of the session, we'll give you an opportunity. Please let the speaker carry on. Chapter 3, verse 45. It continues. The birth of Jesus. Is qalatil malaikatu ya Maryamu. So behold, the angel said, O Mary, inna allaha yubashiruki bi kalimatim minhu that Allah gives you glad tidings, good news of a word from Him. Ismuhul Masih, His name will be the Messiah, translated Christ. Ismuhul Masih, Isa ibn Maryama, Jesus the son of Mary, Wajihan fi dunya wal akhirah, held in honor in this world and in the hereafter, wa minal muqarrabin, and of the company of those nearest to God. What the Christian would say, sitting on the right hand of God. Many people misunderstand, thinking that God Almighty is sitting on a glorified chair, a throne, and Jesus Christ on another little chair by his side, like a little flea or a molecule. Imagine if God Almighty is sitting on a throne physically, 
than Jesus. You know, he wouldn't be even a speck. No, no. No. What it means is in Eastern languages, when we say sitting on my right hand, it doesn't literally mean sitting on my right hand. It's a position of respect. The Quran says that you'll be in the company of those nearest to God, not physically, not geographically, spiritually. Where you Munasa, and he will speak to the people. Fil Mahdi wa Kahlan in childhood and in maturity. And he shall be of the company of the righteous. This is a prophecy. The good news is being given to me that your child, as an infant, he will speak. And as a grown up, normally, naturally. But as an infant, in childhood, he will be gifted. And we find the fulfillment of this prophecy within months of this good enunciation was being made to her within months and we find this in the Holy Quran in a chapter called Surah Maryam meaning chapter Mary this chapter 19 is named in honor of the mother of Jesus Christ Surah Maryam chapter Mary you know, in this whole vast volume, there is no chapter in the name of Muhammad's mother or his wife or his daughter. Can you imagine? But the chapter 19 is in honor of the name of the mother of Jesus. Surah Maryam, chapter 19. It tells us, verse 27, I'm starting, that after the birth of the child, the circumstances being peculiar, she had retired to a remote place in the east. There is no Joseph the carpenter in the Quran. You know Joseph the carpenter? There's no mention about Joseph the carpenter here. This is a miraculous birth and it speaks it, about it miraculously. There is no genealogy of Jesus. Like we find in the, New, in the New Testament, in the Gospel of St. Matthew and the Gospel of St. Luke, between the two, they give this man, mighty messenger of God, 66 fathers and grandfathers. 66. A child that was born miraculously, they go out of the way to give him a genealogy. The Quran does not speak about any genealogy. It does not mention Joseph the carpenter or any other carpenter. So the circumstances of the conception being peculiar was immaculate. She retired to a remote place in the east, says the Quran, and after the birth of the child, she returns. Shamelessly, of course, carrying the little child infant in her arms. At length, she brought the babe to her people, carrying him in her arms. They said, Ya Maryam, O oh Mary, Lakad Jikti Shayan Fariya. So truly an amazing thing has thou brought. They are shocked, knowing full well that she was not married. Where did you bring this child from? The insinuating, illegitimate child. Where did you get this child from? Shamelessly parading in the village. Ya Ukta Haruna, so O oh sister of Harun, coming such a noble ancestry of the children of Aaron, the brother of Moses, the Levites, the priestly class among the Jews. You come from such a priestly and noble family. So your father was not a man of evil, nor thy mother a woman unchaste, insinuating, where did you bring this illegitimate child from? What is she to do? Would they listen to her explanation? Would you listen to your daughter's explanation? If she tells you, she says, Daddy, you know, I heard some voices, and now this child is born, you'll believe her. Would you? They were in no mood to listen to such stories. What was she to do? She merely pointed to the babe. Fa'asharat ilayhi, says the Quran. She merely pointed to the child and says, ask him. She knew that this was no ordinary child. Ask him. 
So they said, قَالُوا كَيْفَ نُكَلِّمُ مَنْ كَانَ فِي الْمَحْدِ سَبِيَا They say, how can we talk to one who's a child in the cradle? A baby, an infant, how can we talk to him? And by a miracle, he spoke from his mother's arms and defended his mother against an unbelieving audience. He says, قَالَ إِنِّي أَبْدُ اللَّهِ So most certainly I am the servant of Allah. Kitab, he has given me revelation. Waja'alani Nabiya and he has made me a prophet. Waja'alani Mubarakan Ainama Kuntu Wausani Bisolati was Zakati Madun to Haya Wabaram Bivalidati Walam Yajani Jabbar and Shakiya. He said, I am indeed a servant of God. He had given me revelation and made me a prophet. And he had made me blessed wheresoever I be. So, and he had made enjoined on me prayer and charity as long as I live. And he has made me kind to my mother and not overbearing or miserable. He has made me kind to my mother and not overbearing or miserable. This is the first miracle that Jesus Christ performed according to this holy book of Islam. He defended his mother against an unbelieving audience as an infant from his mother's arms. I want you to compare this first miracle of Jesus with the first miracle that Jesus Christ performed according to the Holy Bible. You know what miracle he performed? It was at the marriage feast at Cana. You read in the Gospel of St. John that Jesus and his disciples had gone there and they ran short of wine wine so his mother comes to him he says my son knowing that he's got that mysterious powers god had given him powers spiritual powers that he can perform miracles so she comes to him he says my child these people have run short of wine help them do something for them so jesus responds he says, woman woman what have i to do with thee my time is not yet but Persuaded, he turns water into wine. And since then, wine has flowed like water in Christendom. Last year, our beautiful country, our good people, spent 2,000 million run on alcohol. Last year, our good people spent 2,000 million run on gambling. And yet, you see on TV again and again, some program or the other about spastics, about the cripples, about the blind, they haven't got enough money. We haven't got enough money. The government hasn't got enough money. 2,000 million were squandered on alcohol alone last year in our country. The first miracle in the Quran, he defends his mother as an infant. The first miracle in the Bible, he turns water into wine. Going back to the Annunciation, we had reached verse 45, 46, verse 47. When this good news was given to Mary about the birth of a holy son, she says, Qalat Rabbi anna yakunu li waladun walam bashar. She says, Oh my Lord, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? So the angel says in reply, even so, Allah creates what He wills. Whenever He decrees a matter, so whenever He decrees a matter, He merely says to it, Be and it is. This is the Muslim concept of the birth of Jesus. For God to create a Jesus without a human father, he merely wills it and the thing comes into being. If he wants to create a million Jesuses without father, without mother, he merely has to will them into being. This is what we believe about the omnipotence of God in Islam. I had the occasion of sharing this with the Reverend, the head of the Bible Society in Johannesburg. I had gone to Johannesburg on one of my usual trips and I went to the Bible house. I was interested in an Indonesian Bible. I have reason for that. 
So I went and got one there. The Durban Bible House didn't have it. So I go to Johannesburg and I found the Bible in the Indonesian language. And while browsing through the stack, quite a large volume, larger than this, a large volume, New Testament, Greek and English, side by side. Greek, Greek and English. So while handling that, I didn't know that I was being observed. The head of the Bible Society walks up to me, seeing my funny headgear and my beard. He was attracted or he felt that it was a challenge in the Bible house. So he comes up to me and starts a conversation. He said, my interest in such an expensive volume. So I told him I was interested in comparative religion and I had something special that I wanted to look for inside. So he invites me for a cup of tea into his office. I accepted. Very kind of him. So sitting at his table, having tea with him, I started telling him my interest in this subject. That we Muslims, we believe in Jesus. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. On and on, what I told you at the beginning. And the man seemed to be skeptical. You see, only retired reverends can become heads of Bible societies. And he was much older than me. Then, I don't know whether he's still alive. Reverend Dunkers. He was skeptical. So I started reading to him the Quran in Arabic and giving him the translation. Beginning, so Behold, the angel said, O Mary, and on and on and on. By the time I reached this, verse that for God to create he merely wills it and the thing comes into being and God will appoint him an apostle to the children of Israel teaching him the law and the gospel and that he will give life to the dead by God's permission and he will heal those born blind and the lepers by God's permission Reverend Dunkers was elated he says you know this is the same as in my book what I am reading to him from the Quran by heart, what I had known. He says, this is the same in my book, in the Bible. I said, yes, on the face of it, it is the same. But I says, you know, if we analyze it intently, you'll find that the difference between what you have been reading in the Bible and what I'm reading to you is chalk and cheese. You know, this expression, chalk and cheese, the North Americans didn't understand. You see, because they are not used to chalks anymore. They say crayon, crayon. So when you say chalk and cheese, the younger generation never heard the word chalk. Means poles apart, directly opposite, one to the other. Chalk and cheese. He said, no, how can you say that? I said, look, I will demonstrate it to you, the difference. On the face of it, if a Christian comes across what I have spoken just now, written in English without the Arabic text, pieces of paper with these verses that I have quoted to you now. He picks it up. In a thousand years, the Christian will never guess he's reading the Quran. In a thousand years. If he reads what I have read to you, he will say, perhaps this is the Jehovah's Witness version, if he hasn't seen one. Perhaps it's the Roman Catholic version, if he hasn't seen one. Perhaps it's the New World Translation, and so on and on. The Living Bible, if he hasn't seen one. He'll never guess he's reading the Quran. He's going so close, one with the other. But I said, when you compare, it's chalk and cheese. So what do you see? Where? What do you find? I said, look, when the good news was given to Mary, the mother of Jesus, in the New Testament, in the Bible, she says, how can this thing be when I know not a man, mean physically? I know not a man. In the Quran, she says, Oh my Lord, how can I have a son when no man has touched me? Means the same thing. Cent per cent means the same thing. The only difference is the choice of words. Whether no man has touched me or I know not a man, both meaning physically, sexually. But the replies to these question of hers is revealing. We are told in the Gospel of St. Luke that the angel said, and the Holy Ghost will come upon thee, 
and the power of the Most High will overshadow thee. I'm only quoting. I'm telling the Reverend Dunkers that you are giving a stick to the atheist, the agnostic, the communist to beat you with. Because he will ask you, how did the Holy Ghost come upon Mary? How? How did the Almighty overshadow her? How? We know it doesn't mean that. We know it is metaphorical. But the language is down to earth. Language, Holy Ghost coming upon her and the power of the Mosai overshadowing her. In the Holy Quran, the same thing is being spoken. But the language whenever he decrees a matter he merely says to it be and it is for God to create he merely wills it and the thing comes into being it is not necessary for the Holy Ghost or anybody to come upon Mary or overshadow her the language and the eminent Billy Graham some years ago in Kings Park I was there with my secretary Mr. Vanker then we were there and he dramatized this birth of Jesus. He said, and the Holy Ghost came and impregnated Mary. This is how he did it. The great Billy Graham impregnated Mary. The Holy Quran says, for God to create, he merely rules it and the thing comes into being. But what does this miraculous birth prove? Does that make him into a God? Or a begotten son of God? We say no. The Quran says, Inna masala Isa in the Allahi kamasali Adama. He says the similitude of Jesus in the sight of God is like that of Adam. Khalakahum in Turabin, he created him from dust. Thumma qala lahu kun fayakun. And he said, Be and he was. If Jesus becomes God, or the begotten son of God because he had no earthly father then Adam would be a greater God because he had no father and no mother this is the argument if this makes Jesus God because he had no earthly father then in that case whose father was Adam, who was Adam's father God so he is more preeminently God's son than Jesus this is what the Quran says and you believe everybody believes that Adam was created without a father without mother but the Christian missionary he says no you see Adam was made from the dust of the ground he was created but Jesus was begotten he was begotten by God and I have been asking learned people the DDs the master of theologies the reverence I said, excuse me, please, will you please explain to me, when you say begotten, not made, what are you trying to emphasize? I want you to tell me what you are really trying to tell me. You say begotten, not made. And believe me, in 40 years, I haven't come across a single learned Englishman who had ventured out to explain to me what it means. Not that they don't know. But it's a horrifying thought. You're trying to articulate begotten not made I said explain what it means it had to be an American they have the guts the Americans an American when I posed the question he said it means sired by God I said what he said no 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 I don't mean that you ask me what it means I'm only explaining what it means it means sired by God but Adam was made from the dust of the ground So I said, look, there is another Superman in your book, the Bible. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, book of Hebrews, that is the name of a book in the Holy Bible. Book of Hebrews, chapter 7, it speaks about Melchizedek, the high priest of Salem, Salem, Salam, Islam, the high priest of Salem. To whom Abraham gave tithes, taxes, he paid his zakat to this priest. And Paul tells us that without father, without mother, without beginning, without end, without descent, made like unto the Son of God. No father, no mother, no end, 
no beginning, no end, and no descent. So I said, tell me now, who can that be except God himself? Only God could have no beginning and no end. Adam had a beginning and he had an end. Jesus had an apparent, he had a beginning in the stable. We are told in the Gospel of St. Luke that when he was eight days old, he was circumcised and named Jesus by the angel when he was in his mother's womb. So if he was in his mother's womb, that means he had a beginning. And according to the Christians, he gave up the ghost on the cross. So he had an apparent end. This man, Melchizedek, no father, no mother, no descent, no beginning, no end. I said, worship him. The man deserves to be worshipped. But nobody seems to have heard of him. <laughs> it's an amazing thing. When I show this to the learned men of Christianity, I said, look at this. And he, they seem to be seeing it for the first time. Never saw it before. I said, it's there. You're reading it. What are you reading? However, I'm asking the reverend, so between these two versions, the one, the Quranic version of the birth of Jesus, and the other, the biblical version of the birth of Jesus, I asked him, which would you prefer to give to your daughter? And he bowed his head, head in humility, and he said, I would prefer to give the Quranic version. The man was honest. He was humble. I would prefer to give the Quranic version. But people don't want to have access to this book. They don't want to see it. They don't want to touch it. I had some sick people in my office this morning. A, a pastor of the Pentecostal church. This morning in my office. And I'm asking him whether he's seen the Quran. He says, no. I said, look, you haven't read the Quran. He says, no, I don't want to touch it. I don't want to see it. I said, look, this book, a thousand million people in the world today who take this as a book of authority, even out of curiosity, you ought to see this book. If you want to understand the mentality of these thousand million people, common sense demands that you see the book. Common sense. You ought to know what the guy is thinking, what he's talking about. So he'll never touch it. He'll never touch it. It's a sick people. Sickness beyond re remedy. I said, just from the worldly point of view, look, in our universities, they're teaching our children to analyze Das Kapital by Karl Marx. In the country, the book is banned. Das Kapital by Karl Marx is banned. But in our universities, our students have to study it. They want to know how to give battle to that sickness. If we are sick, the Muslims, if you are sick, if you want to understand our sickness, well, here is the book. It will tell you why we are sick, what we are talking, and why we are talking the things that we are talking. But if you don't have access to this book, if you don't want to see this book, how will you know? How are you going to give battle to the sickness? No, but it's a sickness. That sickness is a sickness beyond repair. So what makes the, our main difference? The main